Our guest in this segment is Corey Roman, outgoing city council member, not uh, running for re-election. Corey, good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, thanks for having me back. It's been a while. When's your last day in office? Um, I would have to look at it, but I believe it's June 28th. Is that when the transition takes yeah, place? Yeah, right um, we do this. Uh, Swearing-in ceremony is already on our calendar, um, so it's it's at the end of June. You've been in four years? Yes, four years. Four years. Yeah. Uh, let me take this moment yeah. to tell you how much I have appreciated your tenure as a council member, how great it's been getting to know you, and how much I appreciate your cooperation over the years as a city, city council member from a media perspective. Well, I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, you know, I was saying earlier when I first started my campaign, I was 19 years old. Um, I didn't. I was saying earlier, you know, we were looking at budgets for, you know, the city of Martinsburg and we were looking at like a $40 million budget and I barely had $40 to my own name um, at that point. Um, and you all welcomed me in. Um, you asked me real hard questions, which then challenged me, uh, made me go back and do my own, you know, further research on the, the issues and topics that really matter. Um, and then over the years, you know, you've allowed me to come in and uh, be a co-host. Um, you know, I've served on forums, um, you know, on panels over the years. Um, and, you know, I appreciate you all um, as well because it was definitely intimidating. Um, I'm sure for anybody that's running for office the first time, it's going to be extremely intimidating to, to come on the radio and TV um, and know that you're going to be in front of um, however many people. Um, but, you know, you all invited me in, and it was definitely something um, that I'll always cherish as well. So I well, definitely appreciate that. Well, we did not treat you like a 19-year-old because you didn't carry yourself as a 19-year-old. I you did my job. You came in as a mature <laughs> young man. And if you were nervous, it didn't show. You were cool as a cucumber. Well, I appreciate that. I always um, try to at least come off as uh, level-headed, you know. <laughs> um, but, no, I definitely um, I appreciate that. And one thing, you know, transparency um, is the one thing that matters, especially with, with local government. Um, we were joking about it earlier. There's no grand conspiracies um, going on within the city of Martinsburg right now. Um, so really, really, because that would make Martinsburg the only place on the globe right, where there's not right. a conspiracy going right. on. Yes. No. Um, you know, if you if you read into it, um, you know, there's definitely folks that like to stir the pot, um, but people stir the pot anywhere. Um, but, you know, there's definitely nothing malice uh, going on within the city of Martinsburg. So I think that it's important that local officials um, do anything that they can by any means to make sure that they're spreading the information of um, the business of the, the city, which is, you know, the taxpayers. Uh, I don't want to say investment, but it is the it's, it is, you know, it's it's you. We only work for the taxpayer. Um, so it's something that, you know, you need to be transparent about. Corey, as you wind down your tenure here, talk about some of the things that have been, that have been accomplished uh, that you've worked on while you've been a council member. And tell me what the challenges are that the city of Martinsburg faces in the next four years. Yeah, so I was, I was thinking about it. Um, you know, I knew that was going to be a question that you were going to ask. Um, you know, we're, we're wrapping up the, the term here. Um, I've heard it from many, many people. Um, you know, not just my inner circle or folks that are going to uh, tell me things that, you know, I quote unquote like to hear. Um, but I've heard from many people that Martinsburg is changing. Um, they can see it visually. Um, they hear it from their friends. More people are getting into the downtown area. Um, if you just look at some of the improvements that we've done downtown, um, some are still underway, um, such as, you know, the North Queen Street underpass. Um, I believe that that still has a couple more phases to go through. Um, if you look at what we did down there at the train station, um, that's going to be the layout for the new uh, landscaping or, you know, architecture that we're going to do for uh, the streetscape for the rest of the city going forward. Um, if you look at what we're doing downtown right now, we have City Hall being redone, so it will be able to serve the public for hopefully the next 30, uh, 35 years. Um, that's all going to be dependent on growth, obviously. Um, and then, you know, you look right next door to City Hall and you can see the, the police department building that... Um, was just finished recently. Um, there are many things that are going on within the city of Martinsburg, um, infrastructure-wise, uh, you know, government-wise. We have a new uh, public works building um, that's being worked on, um, and we always have more projects um, in the forefront. That always, if you work within a, a fiscally conservative budget, um, you're always going to have things you want to do, um, mm -hmm. but there's certain things that you can't always do. So, looking at the future. Um, one thing that we've always talked about is, you know, that West Side fire station. Um, as traffic and, um, you know, folks keep moving uh, to the West Side and we, we keep seeing expansion out there, 
um, we're going to have to make sure that you know there is uh, reliable service to that side of town um, we talked about it earlier um, the jam or you know the bottleneck that can be created um, by certain road projects so we have mm -hmm. to make sure that when we are looking at these projects it's uh, working with the state working with you know county officials um, to ensure that we're getting not just the best bang for our buck, um, but something that, that makes the most sense for, for everybody as well. So I know that there's a, there's a myriad of things, you know, that mm -hmm. I could say that um, I want the city to do. Well, give us a couple. Um, that West Side Fire just, Station. Yeah, besides that. Yes, that one that one's huge. Um, and another mm -hmm. thing is stormwater issues. Um, throughout the city, um, as you know, we enacted the, the stormwater fee. Um, hopefully as that, that fund continues to build um, you'll be able to see some larger projects that will alleviate some flood flooding um, that we have um, when storm heavy storms come through you can see it sometimes you know on that that North Queen Street underpass that one gets filled mm -hmm. with water but I also lived um, when I first was on council on um, the 1400 block of Virginia Avenue um, and down there along the highway there um, there's a lot of flooding and you know storm water that gets backed up and, and folks uh, backyards will look like rivers um, and I was one of those people, you know, for two mm -hmm. years, and that was a, a family property, so we've always known about that issue. Um, so stormwater, infrastructure, um, roads can always be fixed, right? As mm -hmm. soon as you fix the one um, <laughs> on this end of the, the town, the other one's going to be ready to be patched again. So just making sure that we keep doing, like we have been, uh, continuous paving projects each year. Um, and the big thing is affordable housing. You know, that's uh, something we hear all the time is that Martinsburg does not have, uh, quote-unquote, affordable housing um and i always question if folks what they mean by affordable housing um if you mean government subsidized housing we do not um but if you look at projects uh such as the interwoven mills um, i personally do believe that that is what i would consider affordable housing um, for this area if you just look at some of the rents that are going in um thirteen fourteen hundred dollars with all utilities included as well as a gym um a pool all the different things um, I would love to be able to pay that um, for you know the, the size of space that you're getting there so looking at different projects like that and seeing how the city um, can team up with private money um, that's coming in to get like I said earlier the best bang for your buck um, is something that the city will continue to do um, but needs to make sure that they they have emphasis on it moving forward Matthew I would assume that affordable housing would lead to growth as far as the number of people within the city when you consider that the city is obviously locked by its current boundaries and those boundaries can't change without um, folks outside of the, the city saying, hey, we really want to be a part of the city. Is that something you would like to, you know, have Martinsburg be at a point where even those right on the fringe would be like, you know, I'd rather be in the city than out of the city right now? Yeah, um, that's something. So my grandma um, actually lives on the end of Winchester Avenue, um, not the end, but mm -hmm. of the intersection right before Quarles. You know where Quarles is, that, that little yeah, gas mm -hmm. station right yeah. there? So she lives across the street um, from there, and she's in the county. Um, but if you go down a block, um, it's, it's where the city line starts, right? Um, and she's always, and people have always had the connotation that it's quote-unquote more expensive to live in the city. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know where that comes from. I think may has, maybe historically at some point, you know, there was a fee that maybe was causing, um, you know, a, a disparity between the county and city. Mm -hmm. But I definitely believe that it's getting to the point um, because people do look at the services that the city of Martinsburg provides yeah. and they like the services. Like I, that's the, the best thing um, that local government can provide taxpayers, mm -hmm. right? The things that they're supposed to be providing, not the, the hooey and things that we see at the, the national level um, where, you know, they're getting in the weeds on social issues. Um, no, I like local government because, you know, if, if you have a problem that's out in front of your house, we actually have the people that can go out there um, and fix a problem for you, um, get the road uh, patched or, um, you know, work with the, the different departments to actually uh, see a change. So I think that it's moving um, in that direction because people are seeing um, the difference that's being made. Um, and one thing, you know, I talked about, um, it was probably a couple years ago at this point, um, was wanting PD. Um, to actually be able to be in the downtown interacting with the with the different people so that um, when folks come in for these different events they feel comfortable in downtown um, uh, we wanted people to start associating downtown with being a, a comfortable place um, because for years and years and I know everybody can attest to it downtown 
had both ends, right? You know, you could always go down and you, you could go to the blue white or you could mm-hmm. go down to um, a different shop and, you know, eat, but certain folks wouldn't stay around, you know, as, as the evening went on um, and different things because of, um, I would say, connotations that any downtown could have. Um, but I think that the police department um, and city administration has done a great job um, at trying to change that narrative mm-hmm. um, around policing in general, um, but especially in our downtown. Yeah, how has Main Street Martinsburg and those type of events helped the city as a whole and, and what you all do in city government? Yeah, so Robbie um, Robbie and Raven over at Main Street, um, I can't give them enough props. Um, you know, I, I like to argue for them in budget time um, when it's time mm-hmm. to, you know, see an allocation um, increase. I think that they deserve that. Um, and something moving forward is that I believe that the line item um, for Main Street needs to be increased. And we did a good job. Um, And a good thing by bringing that line item into our general fund um, budgeting process so that it it was always going to be paid, right? Um, But now it is shored up and we can start to move different funds around. Um, But when they have those types of events, um, it's bringing in, like I said earlier, that new crowd of people that we want to see the downtown and we want them to have a good time. We want them to see the different shops that are down there, the different things we have to offer. Um, and we want them to meet other people from here because that's one of the best things that we have in this area is good people. Yeah. Um, and you, you can't get that everywhere. Um, so I think that, you know, Main Street Martinsburg and all of the, the different uh, events that they have are really helped along that spark with, as we've seen infrastructure being improved, we've seen, uh, you know, more events and more people coming in and it's really uh, provided a spark for downtown, um, especially coming out of COVID that we needed. Yeah. Yeah, they took what Randy Lewis did and, and really put it on steroids. Right. I mean, because Randy had that thing running like a machine and right. it was growing. And then they have sort of taken what he did and, and really built on it, which is which is what you want to see. And I'm sure it's what Randy wanted to see exactly. when he stepped away is he wanted to see new leadership come in and, and, and further his mission. Yeah. Um, let me let me talk a little bit about the stormwater fee. I yeah. got a question yeah. and you may not have any idea about the answer, yeah. but why does it have to be built separately? From from your water bill and stuff, why can't uh, it just all come together? My understanding is is that the stormwater is its own utility. So like, it would be kind of like combining your water and garbage bill. I mean, I get I get what you're saying. Water right? and that, garbage in the city do come on the same bill. Well, I'm saying it's. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, Corey, but I'm like, wait, I'm a city resident. Well, I'm saying <laughs> combining different utilities. I think that they want the utility to be able to stand on its own stormwater to be its own thing it because just, stormwater had always been encompassed by the general fund. Right, right. Right. So having it be able to stand on its own with its own enterprise fund being able to, well, no, no, and I understand that, but it just, I think it makes it a heck of a lot more yeah. difficult. And I've talked to a few yeah. of my friends here in the city where it's like, okay, I just got a late fee. Well, what is this? Why can't they just yeah. put this together? It would just, if you're just paying one bill, it just makes, I, I think it's, I think it makes it, it makes we're happy to have stormwater management because we definitely need it in the city but i think it would make it a heck of a lot easier for the people who live in the city to just put it on the same bill and not have to worry about something separate yeah no i definitely agree with you and that's um something i can pass along to our friends Um, you know that's that's one thing we actually try to listen um to think or I don't know if everybody does, right? Um, but I definitely try to listen um, to things like you said because that just makes sense. Well, I mean, right? I, I love the city, and I love the services they provide. I mean, from public works to the police. I mean, I think our city is one of the best road cities around. There's no question. Let me ask you a question. Parking. Yeah. yeah. How can we How can we continue to grow as a city and grow the downtown when there's no place to park? Yeah, so I think the question is where do you want to park? Do you? I would like to see a parking garage, right? I, I was in favor before they built the new uh, public safety building. Uh-huh. I thought that should have been a parking lot. I mean, the public safety building was definitely right. needed, but for the growth of the city, I think yeah. I think parking is yeah. parking is paramount. I don't, I don't know where they can put it because, I mean, obviously it can't be too far away. It has to be, downtown. Yeah. you know, it has to be yeah. in downtown or right on the edge or nobody's going to park there, yeah. but... I mean, I think that's one of the things that, that really hamstrings the growth of Martinsburg is, and you know, reliable parking. Another thing with the parking, um, and I don't know if it's something that needs to be done with, with signage or something that's just explained better to people, but if you look within the city and especially the downtown area, there are a lot of adjacent parking lots that may be a block or two blocks off of the downtown, but you 
wouldn't know about it unless you knew about it, right? So I do believe, and you know, we see it with these, with the, the downtown events, you know, having the most people we've probably had in downtown in decades, if not ever, um, and we not since since the mill was open well, and they had parades. <laughs> yes. say, since um, the, it's a revitalization that we haven't seen in a long time of seeing people that want to be downtown. But that's the type of thing: parking, uh, parking garage, or making sure that those spaces are better displayed for people. Um, I get it. I, I, I mean, genuinely I, do. Did they they put a new lot in where the uh, Widmeyer's Cleaners was? Is there a lot there, or is that just city parking? Um, <sighs> Are you talking about across from? I'm talking behind uh, uh, behind Anthony's Pizza. Yes, yeah, so that is um, that is a city lot um, for the the PD office. Okay, um, and it, it well they need it, definitely needed more parking. Yeah, I was gonna say it definitely yeah. it handles overflow because the courts there as well too. Oh yeah, so folks, you know, if they're doing business downtown, they can, they can park there. But parking is something that I would love to see, um, and that's an investment, right? I, I don't know the the figure off the top of my head, but it's X amount of dollars per space um in these parking garages um so really having it attached to something that is revenue generating um so that we could have that private public partnership on something like that is what i see other cities do right if you have um like i see it all the time in frederick um if it's a you know a couple local businesses or a large employer um that buys up x amount of the um spaces within that that lot for you know the month um, that really helps give a bottom line um, for investment, right? We can't, we don't want to build a, a parking garage that costs, I don't even, I don't even want to give you a rough, a I lot don't know, of millions, $10 I would assume. million dollars maybe for what we're looking at, if not more. Um, Charge a thousand dollars an hour parking well, fee to <laughs> pay city, for it. I mean, we would be, um, I'd be long gone. My kids would probably be long gone before we made the money back. Yeah, when, when yeah but there's got to be a return on well, investment. I mean, dollar, an dollar, hour dollar an hour parking. But if you're able to revitalize right. the downtown more and bring, right. draw more business right. because there is more parking, right. I mean, it's not necessarily just the money the city brings right. out on the parking side, but also the, the tax revenue. Well, what if what if we saw an, a, an investment from either the state or the, the national level into the train, into the mark system that, that runs in, into D.C.? And we did have... Have that influx of people that wanted to live in Martinsburg, work in D.C., like we're already seeing, um, and maybe that was something that the parking garage was attached to the train station, where it's right downtown, and it's something you know, it's it's going to have to be that um, that combination of something coming together, um, because I don't I don't see the city doing it on their own, nor would I advise. Hey, let me jump in real quick because uh, as so often happens uh, on Facebook, things take on a life of their own, and they're not based in fact, and that's what's going on right now. Uh, so. Uh, just a moment here. Everybody on Facebook commenting, take a breath and relax, okay? Everybody who's running for office in the city of Martinsburg, regardless of whether they will participate in a form, the form's off. There is no form. That's not going to happen because they don't want it to happen. Candidates don't want a form, so we're not doing a form. But everybody who's running for office will be invited and has been already invited onto this show to talk about their candidacy. I remind you, I don't have subpoena power. I can't make someone come onto the program to talk about their candidacy. All I can do is offer and follow up, beg, cajole, be nice, which I'm doing all that to try to accommodate people on the program who are running for city office. But I can't make them come on. So if, you're, if your favorite candidate isn't on the program in the next week and a half, it's not for lack of trying on my part. So everybody on Facebook... Calm down and take a breath. No one's being excluded from this show. I have not done that in the past. By law, we have to offer everybody who runs for office time on this show. But I can't make them take it. If they prefer to go somewhere else, they go somewhere else. That's their right. But no one's being excluded and nobody's rights are being infringed. And I don't want to have to address this every 10 minutes because of comments that are incorrect on Facebook. And Rob, I'm going to use my last minute that I have on here to re reiterate what I said in the beginning of this show. I was a 19-year-old person that had no experience with any political realm, a Democrat in a heavily conservative mm -hmm. area, and I was welcomed with open arms into this studio to provide what I thought was my vision for the city of Martinsburg and for the future of West Virginia. The opportunity is there. I know it. The opportunity has been provided for people. I know it. I was one of those people. We cannot, we have to get around this rhetoric of conspiracy and everything. 
Um, that's 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 maybe a reason why people like myself and we always say we want to see pe younger people running for office. This is why I'm done. This is the type of this is the type of crap that we get um, from people that want to do nothing but honest work and see the betterment of the society that they grew up in, that their sixth, fourth great grandparent moved here from Ireland <laughs> um, to, to grow up in. And we want to see it be better. Um, so it, it frustrates me as well, Rob. And um, hopefully we can get better because if not, I hate to see the people that are going to sign up to run for office. Um, you're just going to keep getting wackier and wackier and wackier and West Virginia will stay 50th. So that's, that's my Rob rant for the day. Um, <laughs> thank you. That it's, brings back a term. I, I appreciate it. And I'll come in at any point. You know that you, we, we have a good relationship. I'll, I'll do anything you need of me. Um, and I, and, that's for anybody here because I want to see this community grow. Um, and if it's by sharing information, um, giving a perspective on something, um, I'd love to do it. So, Well, we've been waiting for you to finish your graduate school classes uh, mm -hmm. to be a co-host again. So it's, I mean, you may be available sometime in the near future. I am. I yeah, am. Yep, just let too. me know. Just let me know. Cor, thanks. Uh, appreciate all the work you've done for City Council, all your cooperation on the show over the years, as I said before. And uh, appreciate you for being uh, a a reasonable person to deal with at the political level. And that's uh, that's saying something in this day and age. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you all for allowing me uh, to be myself. Thank you for allowing me uh, space to grow and learn and challenge me as well, because everybody needs to be challenged. And if you aren't, um, you're being coddled. So. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> Corey Roman, and uh, he has about another month left as a city councilman in Martinsburg, moving on to do some other things too. 